Welcome everyone um, to Wet Canvas Arts. Uh, my name is Sharanya and I'm going to be your host uh, this evening for the sketching. Let me talk about the materials we have um, today and then I will share my Kingfisher drawing as well. Whenever I'm practicing sketching or I am um, just doing a general sketch, I like to use the newsprint. Um, it's just a regular paper um, and they're very thin sheets. So this one is actually a brand new one that I just got. Um, and you can see how it's slightly toned and I like that and it's a very very thin sheet it is not for any uh, fancy renderings so this is not where you would archive it this is purely for practice um, and I set it up in a um, tabletop easel so I've got my easel right here you can, can you, this is my you can see my easel right here and I've just put it put it on a pad and then I've got it here. I do clip them on, so I have two clips that'll clip on the top here. So um, it just holds everything in place for me as I'm sketching. So that's what I'm going to be using today. As far as paper is concerned, you are welcome to use any paper you have. This is just a preference. So once you start sketching and practicing more, this makes more sense to have around. Um, Two pencils that I like to use today. Um, I will talk about both of them. Uh, this is a Stedler Mars Lumograph Black. I work with the blackest of black pencils. It's just a personal preference. I don't like the gray that a graphite pencil gives you. So I like it to be nice and dark and nice and black. So any mark that I make is nice and black so I prefer that that's the reason why I use the Mars Lumograph black it is a pencil but it's blacker than your graphite the other one I have here um, my favorite of everything is this one I use it all the time um, this is a woodless charcoal pencil this again is a preference um, when you hold charcoal sticks it makes your hand really dirty uh, this is like the best of both worlds. It's woodless, so it gives you the entire width uh, charcoal stick will. But at the same time, it does not, it's not messy because it has a plastic coating around it. So um, I really like these for my sketching. And you can see I can shade with it, I can draw with it, I can make thin lines with it. So this is like my go-to for everything. Um, because it's woodless, they do tend to break off. That's why I have my pencil extender. Um, this is a broken off piece, as you can see, so I've put it inside my extender to use. So this is uh, everything that I'm going to be using today. I do have two erasers, a regular eraser and a kneaded eraser. And the reason I, like I said, I use this is for practice. This is particularly practice specific paper, so it's not for archival drawing. So don't do it if you're going to frame it, uh, if you're going to store it, if you're going to sell it. Please don't use the newsprint, it's only for practice. We'll start with basic shapes. Before the basic shapes itself, we'll actually be um, planning your drawing. In this picture, um, if you look at the uh, the Kingfisher, he's, he's at the one-third uh, Part, one third line. So if you divide your paper into thirds, you, the second third is called your major major line. So he's parked at the second one third, which is actually pretty important when it comes to visually placing your subjects. Anything that is sitting on your one third line, particularly these parts, capture your attention very quickly so it's really good to make your subjects or any part any concentrated part of your uh, painting so maybe if you're doing a still life you have three or four objects the main focus object will sit on your one third mark the one third figure out where you want your drawing and if you look very carefully the kingfisher's head is in this one third is in the major point of access is here it's in this cross section and then only his body flows so he's got an oval head it's not as big so I'm actually going to correct it and make it um, smaller so that's kind of the oval um, if you want to please go ahead and add an angled line that's the angle of the oval it's not flat 
it's not straight it's at an angle go ahead and make that angle and then you can make draw your oval around it the next thing is the angle through the body the angles are really um, crucial you can ballpark this yes but if you're not able to do it go ahead and draw that line um, uh, one thing I'm noticing about the body is even though it's below his head the bulk of the body is in the la latter half it's on this side so I'm actually going to draw a line for the body of the angle slightly off center so this is the center of my oval but I'm going slightly off center and I'm drawing that line so that will help me draw the body's um, oval in the correct angle and then a tiny triangle at the bottom and then I'm going ahead and I'm adding a curve here for the front part of the body. We've got a, a tiny uh, line here for the leg and this I'm going to take this opportunity to kind of mark my branch. I'm not going to go into big detail on the branch it's just a it's just a cylindrical line. There we go and all right we've got the basic shapes now let's um oh we do need to do the beak so let's go ahead and add the beak nice and long this is where the angle comes very useful you use that angle to place your beak as well and it's really easy to do it like that all right now comes the part where i start refining my drawing i'm going to look at the head if you look at the head um he doesn't really follow a slanted line like this oval his head goes up a little and then bulges out. So that front line, it goes up a little bit. So let me erase that top oval and then kind of show you. So typically this is what, uh, this is how light your guideline should be. So you can draw on top of this. So watch, um, what I'm doing is instead of going slanting like this, I'm going up a little bit for the forehead and then his head is actually flat at the top so notice that flatness and draw that flatness the oval is only to help you with the volume it's not the final you will fix any parts that needs to be fixed so you can draw what you're seeing so i've got that line that goes up turn flat head and then at the at the end it doesn't again follow the oval it does go beyond and come down like this okay there we go that's how the head looks all right now for the details i am going to finish this with pencil you guys are welcome to choose anything you want i will be concentrating on the highlights and the shadows because that's all you need to make your picture come alive um, when i say highlights it doesn't mean the white of my neck or um, behind the Kingfisher itself, it's actually the lighter parts of the body and the darker parts of the body. And this is also where I'm going to add in tiny details like the curves and the feathers, a few here. Um, we've got one wing jutting out here that I've forgotten to draw, so I'm going to add that. And then um, we'll finish out the tail itself. The tail's actually slightly bent down it's not it doesn't follow the same line and angle as the body the tail uh, is this way so let's go ahead fix that you can see how as i come back to the picture i'm noticing more things so that's another thing um, we artists do is we don't usually stick to the first drawing that's why we draw in layers we add the first basic shapes uh, we add the proportions then we slowly add the details and then we come back to these parts again and again so we can notice those details so um there you have it so that's my tail okay much better um it follows the calm lines of the body again that's part of the reason why i'm very finicky about these details today um it's it's what's going to um you know showcase the the kingfisher and the pose he's sitting in all right now for the darker and lighter parts of the body oh my god thank you guys so much it's awesome i can't believe you drew with me it's amazing thank you thank you so much carla and d you guys did an amazing job it looks amazing 
I am so glad my instructions are helpful. Thank you. Oh, Kim, it looks amazing. <laughs> you guys are all so great. You guys should teach a class. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. These are all amazing drawings. I, I love uh, when I see the results of my class. It's really, really, really rewarding. Thank you. It looks awesome. Um, I'm going to pronounce your name wrong. Shulamit. It looks amazing. I, I can see how you colored it with color pencil. It looks awesome. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it takes a lot of practice. That's part of the reason I used to use print sheet. Um, it's, it's very cheap and you can, you know, go through the pages as much as you want and it's just really, really very friendly when you're drawing with this paper. It's, it comes a little toned, which actually works as well. So yeah, go for it. it it's a good place to start sketching. Right. Exactly. Yes, that's exactly what I want to teach. I don't want to. I don't want to teach you guys to copy. I don't teach you to copy. Actually, I explain every detail I see. I explain everything I feel is important because I looked at him and I said, "Oh my God, he's ready to pounce. How do you capture that?" And then I sit and I study the picture and I see these lines. And then you make any changes to those lines. They're small, subtle curves, but you make the changes. The 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 message or that that action doesn't come across and I uh, for me I think um, those those details matter and that's how I teach thank you so much for identifying it and I'm, I'm, I hope it's helpful for the next time you draw something